Welcome to my little corner of the internet, where we celebrate creativity and growth. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're thrilled to have you here as we tackle Maurice Berger. Maurice Berger, May 22, 1956, March 22, 2020, was an American cultural historian, curator, and art critic who served as a research professor and chief curator at the Center for Art, Design, and Visual Culture, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Boga was recognized for his interdisciplinary scholarship on race and visual culture in the United States. He curated a number of important exhibitions examining the relationship between race and American art, including the critically acclaimed For All the World to See, Visual Culture and the Struggle for Civil Rights co-organized in 2011 by the National Museum of African American History and Culture of the Smithsonian Institution and the Center for Art, Design and Visual Culture at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County which focused on the role visual imagery played in shaping, influencing, and transforming the modern struggle for racial equality and justice in the United States. On March 22, 2020, he fell ill and died in Copake, New York, from heart failure exacerbated by untested complications of COVID-19. He was 63 years old. Now, we shift our focus to biography, a topic that deserves our attention. Boga grew up poor in a predominantly black and Puerto Rican public housing project on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, an experience which helped to shake his views on race. As a Jew, I have known anti-Semitism. As a gay man, I have known homophobia, Boga wrote in the New York Times in 2017 about his childhood but neither has seemed as relentless as the racism I witnessed growing up a steady drumbeat of slights, thinly veiled hostility, and condescension perpetrated by even the most liberal and well-meaning people. It was painful to watch, and, as my friends let me know, considerably more painful to endure. Berger received a Bachelor of Arts from Hunter College in 1978 and uft in art history from the Graduate Center, CUNY in 1988. In the mid as he was an assistant professor of art and gallery director at Hunter College. His interdisciplinary project Race and Representation, co-organized with the anthropologist John Etterby Cole at Hunter College in 1987, included a book, art exhibition, and film program. His study on institutional racism, Are Art Museums Racist?, appeared in Art in America. In the early years, Berger extended his work on visual culture and race to include the sustained study of the work of African-American artists, performers, filmmakers, producers, and cultural figures, culminating both in solo exhibitions Adrian Piper, a retrospective and Fred Wilson objects and installations, multimedia projects including compilation videos and elaborate context stations for art exhibitions, and essays on subjects as diverse as black artists and the limitations of mainstream art criticism the racial implications of art historical and curatorial efforts to evaluate outsider art, the Harlem Document Project of New York's Photo League, and the photography, writing, and films of Gordon Parks. In 2011, he served as curator for all the world to see visual culture and the struggle for civil rights at the National Museum of African American History and Culture of the Smithsonian Institution. According to The New Yorker, the exhibition posited the camera and the proliferation of black images in pop culture as a crucial weapon in shaping public opinion and motivating change in America before and during the civil rights era. The article further states, Evidence is rich and varied including film clips of Paul Robeson, Amos and Andy, The March on Washington, Malcolm X, and The Supremes, as well as a wide array of printed matter from copies of Ebony, Jet, and Sepia to a poster for Shaft. As we progress, let's zoom in on publications and examine its role in shaping our overall narrative. Bogo wrote the monthly Race Stories column, a continuing exploration of the relationship of race to photographic portrayals of race for the Lens section of the New York Times. 
Berger's writings have appeared in Art Forum, Art in America, The New York Times, Pen America, The Village Voice, October, National Geographic, The Brooklyn Rail, Wired, and The Los Angeles Times. In addition to his 11 books, which include White Lies, Race and the Myths of Whiteness for R, Strauss and Giroux, 1999, and For All the World to See, Visual Culture and the Struggle for Civil Rights, Yale University Press, 2010, Berger is the author of numerous essays for anthologies and exhibition catalogues. White Lies, an experimental and largely autobiographical book, counterpoise short stories, vignettes, and analytical texts to examine the nature of whiteness as a racial category and to make it visible and comprehensible to the reader. The historian David Rodiger has noted of the book that its passages gather classic accounts of what whiteness means. Berger's collage of provocations from experts on white identity coupled with bursts of poignant autobiography destabilize racial certainties. Now, let's shift our focus to exhibitions and embark on an intellectual exploration of its various dimensions. Berger's exhibitions on race and culture included retrospectives of the artists Adrian Piper 1999 and Fred Wilson 2001, both of which travelled extensively in the United States and Canada. In 2003, he organised White, Whiteness and Race in Contemporary Art, which featured the work of Cindy Sherman, Nay and Blake, William Kentridge, Gary Simmons, Paul McCarthy, Nikki South, Lee, Andrea Robbins and Max Becker, and Mike Kelly, among others. Berger advocated for more aggressive educational outreach and broader cultural and social context for high art in museums and created complex, multimedia context stations for numerous exhibitions, including Action Abstraction, Pollock, De Kooning, and American Art, at the Jewish Museum 2008 and Black Male, Representations of Masculinity, 1994 and the American Century, Art and Culture. 1999, both at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. In 2015, Berger designed and curated an exhibition titled Revolution of the Eye, Modern Art and the Birth of American Television in dedication to how the emergence of stylistic avant-garde art from the late as to the mid as influenced the role of television as an entertainment medium and vice versa. The exhibition was organized by the Jewish Museum, New York and the Center for Art, Design, and Visual Culture of the University of Maryland. In Vanessa Arschwitz's review of the overall exhibition, she summarizes the entire experience as an intermingling conglomerate of art, entertainment, and commerce, highlighting the major underlying theme that there is little distinction between the constructed definitions of art and media. The exhibition showcases television's role in promoting artistic experimentation, its contributions to the contemporary art scene, and its pivotal influence in shaping the era's characteristic cutting-edge aesthetics. A hardcover literature edition of the exhibition, published on May 12, 2015, has also been made available for purchase on the Yale University Press. As reviewed by Han Kim, doctoral candidate at the University of Illinois, the revolution of the eye, modern art and the birth of American television consists of two major parts, a seven-section analytical essay that illuminates the relationship between pop-cultural artistic movements and the technological advancements in telemedia in addition to a cultural timeline that provides an accessible representation of the evolution of modern American art. Revolution of the Eye, Modern Art and the Birth of American Television has also been made available as a virtual exhibition, organized by the Center for Art, Design, and Visual Culture of University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Welcome to the next segment, where we explore media projects and its significance in our journey. From the mid as on Berger produced cinematic culture stories, syncopated compilations of historic clips from American film and television that explore issues of identity and self-representation. His film Threshold was featured in the 2012 Whitney Biennial. The film was inspired by his conversations with Alicia Hall Moran and Jason Moran about their ideas for Bleed, their residency for the Biennial 
Threshold is a continuum of images from popular culture produced during the period of or about the historic civil rights movement. Critic Ben Ratliff, writing in the New York Times, observed that Threshold strung together tips from movies and television shows of African Americans beginning various journeys, hussages or challenges, Diana Ross and Michael Jackson on the Yellow Brick Road in The Wiz, Dancers on Soul Train, Denzel Washington as Malcolm X stepping up to a podium. The mood of that film carried through the whole week, moving forward, crossing lines, evolving. As we enter this new chapter, let's navigate the complexities of awards and honours and unravel its multifaceted nature. For his race stories column for the Lens section of the New York Times, Berger was the recipient of the 2018 Infinity Award from the International Center of Photography and the 2014 Arts Writers Grant from Creative Capital and Warhol Foundation. He received multiple grants from the National Endowment for the Humanities, National Endowment for the Arts, Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts, Peter Norton Family Foundation, Trellis Fund, and J. Patrick Lannan Foundation. For his work on the For All the World to See segment of UNET's Sunday Arts, Berger received an Emmy Award nomination from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, New York Chapter. His book White Lies, Race and the Myths of Whiteness for R. Strauss and Giroux, 1999, was named as a finalist for the 2000 Horace Mann Bond Book Award of Harvard University and received an honorable mention from the Gustavus Myers Outstanding Book Award from Boston University School of Social Work. His companion book for For All the World to See Yale, 2010, was named Choice Outstanding Academic Title 2010. Art and Architecture from the American Library Association. In 1993, Berger was appointed as the inaugural fellow at the Veralist Center for Art and Politics, where he helmed numerous programs and publications, including the first compilation celebrating the New School Art Collection, Patrons of Progress. The Veralist Center Forum 2020 opened with a tribute to Berger, gathering friends, colleagues, and allies for a celebration of his legacy. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the fascinating world of death. Boga died due to presumed complications from COVID-19 on March 22, 2020. He was 63. Your feedback helps me improve, so please take a moment to leave a comment or review.